What's up, guys? I am trying out a whole bunch of new things right now. So hopefully it's all working out correctly. No guarantees on that, I guess. I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a completely different live streaming interface on YouTube here. So hopefully we're live. I can never I can never tell what to expect. Not only that, but earlier today I had to update all kinds of stuff because uh, I, I run a Macintosh, and they had somewhat recently um, gone to a new version of OS X. I think which one are we on now? Like Catalina or something, and that stopped this camera from working. I use a um, a Blackmagic uh, stream capture card, and this thing was not recognizing it at all. So I had to kind of do some tech support early earlier today. Sounds good. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Coco, the nut, the nut. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. We are a little early. It is uh, Saturday, 5.51. We're going to get started with the choral portion of the show at 2 p.m. So... We get to hang out for another nine minutes or so. What is going on? Let's see, turn up the volume. Okay. So this is as high as I can turn it up. So if you need it higher than this, I'll just need to speak louder without clipping my mic. So hopefully you guys can hear me a little bit better now. Tech Your Talk says it looks good, sounds good. Excellent, excellent. Two please with the early $1.99 super chat. I appreciate it, two please. Speaking of, folks that are donors to this channel, including Two Please. I want to say the quick uh, quick shout outs to the to the Patreon following. So thank you very much to Juanita Threlkeld, Jeremy Altman, aka Two Please, Bill Russell, Stefania Sana Nominet, Nomine, uh, Sean Gill, Christopher Frame, Dion Zaggy, Puddle Aquatics, Amy Brunner, Brandy Camp, Tim Garner, Harkins Aquatics, Diane Rishworth, Jennifer D. Nash, Zara McIntosh, Catherine Kehoe, Lacry Fine Art, Tasha Radich, The Classroom Reef, Chuck Admire, Jean A. Van Voorst, Rico's Aquariums, Christopher H. Curry, Alan Jackson, Trevor Joseph Overbeck, Kevin Cortez, Steve Pond, Ryan Kern, Nate Bowler, Ernest Wallace Jr., Dave Davis, and Elizabeth Dowell. So, thank you guys very much. That's the, the Patreon guys that, uh, that get the shout out. It's a little perk of joining us on Patreon. So, I have some guests coming today, and they just arrived. So, I've got Nathan and his two kids. Hi, guys. You want to go on the screen? You guys want to be on YouTube? Are you guys shy? Watch yourself on YouTube any other time. <laughs> How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. Good to see you. Yeah, it's been a while. So there's your mic. It is hot. Okay. Max, if you would like to come over here and say hi to YouTube, you can. Yeah, I want to come see. So if you pop in right between here, there you, you are. are. You want to say hi? Say hi, YouTube. Hi. There you go. That, there, that's it. That's wow. all we got, YouTube. That's all we got for you. Yeah. <laughs> this generation, I'll tell you. Welcome. Would you like to? What's this? Uh, it's a little trackpad. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah. You know what? I, I know why. You guys weren't hearing me very well. <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't even have my mic clipped. <laughs> I'm such a novice at this. Here. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to turn myself down a little bit. Okay. Mic check again, because I've only been doing this for, like, I don't know, five, six years. So hopefully I'm not clipping my mic now that I'm wearing it. What's up, two, please? Two, please? Again, the nine dollar nine. Dollar ninety nine. I can I can talk eventually. Uh, covered by the live chat, but it's cool. 
I don't know what that means, but okay. Tech Gear Talk's giving us a little bit of audio. Okay, I know Nathan fluctuates, but maybe turn him down a bit. There we go. Okay, now turn yourself down. <laughs> hmm? Okay, all right. I'll just have to keep an eye on that. Because we don't usually, see, I don't usually use these lavalier mics um, for, the, for this broadcast. Um, I usually use uh, like a, a regular stationary microphone. So it's always going to take a little bit of playing around. So again, just, just let, again, let me know in chat if you need me to turn up or down. If you, if you need Nathan turned up or down. Just... You want to type it in? Mm -hmm. Well, can see if your switch is connected. Oh, you forgot your switch? Oh my goodness. Ah, that's tough. The phone. Lexi, will you please share yours at times? You guys take turns. I don't know my own Wi-Fi password. Why don't you change your shoes? Take your shin pads off if you'd like. No? You want us to keep those shoes on? Okay. There we go. Thank you. Yep. You, you'll, she'll, she'll share with you. Maybe you guys can play a game that you both can play on there. And there's Netflix downstairs also. And there's Netflix downstairs. I, he, he was planning on coming here and playing Switch for two like straight hours. And oh he, no! He forgot his. Oh no! <laughs> it was a, That's why he came. Because yeah. he's interested in any of this. <laughs> he will never make that mistake again. No. Individuals can turn off live chat so it doesn't cover the screen. When did live chat cover the screen? Is that a thing? Is that a, oh, it's, a, it's on mobile. On mobile. On mobile, okay. I was, like, I was thinking, I've never seen that before, but I guess on mobile that makes sense. Okay, so we've got three minutes left. Uh, is, was there any other announcements I had? Not really. So there was a couple of things. Well, I do have announcements. I lied. So... Uh, we aren't going to be doing anything super formal for Black Friday, but we're pretty much having an entire Black November. And so that starts with the shipping being reduced to $19.99 down from $39.99. So I know that like some folks, it was a major obstacle, the, the cost of shipping. So usually it's $39.99 and it's free over $250. So we brought that down for just for this month to $19.99, free over $250. And there's also additional items uh, that are going on sale. And we are announcing those one week at a time. But you're also seeing some um, of those sale items incorporated into this live show as well. So you have that to look forward to. Um, downstairs, my plumber is actually here. Yes. We, we, actually got um, some of the plumbing going on, on the aquariums there. So we have four of those tanks up and running. Uh, it's just still cycling RO water, but the fact that there is moving water is an excellent development. I'm on board with that. And um, I'm like really, really, really pleased with just how good um, like the Abyss return pumps are. They are super good. I look forward to checking them out. Yeah, like, I, I mean, I've heard great things about them, but actually seeing it in person and running, they are pretty much dead silent. They pretty much also ignore head pressure. So once we got it to, uh, to work on one of the aquariums, right, on one set of the aquariums, then turning on the other two, we didn't have to like to increase the power of the pump that much. Like we took about fifty percent to to get it into that tank, and then to to then double the number of tanks was like going from like fifty to like sixty. That didn't care that it was been getting branched out. No big deal. Yeah, like insanely good, but they're kind of pricey. I didn't even take a look, but do you have water running through the tanks into the sump and back? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and it's it's so quiet like those those bean animal overflows plus the return pump you really can't yes. even hear the water. Yes, and when I watched your little video, not to call it little, your video about the tiny um, no viewership <laughs> video, <laughs> the the one you most recently did about mistakes is that what you were titled it? Mm -hmm. And when you brought up the um, 
the just one pump for the flow using closed loops that ticked off a like a, a check mark in my head. I was like, oh, less less pumps to service mm -hmm. and still have a flow. Big time. And and they don't probably they don't build up and slow down like internal pumps or a power like heads. short of a snail getting caught in Yeah, the exactly. Power. Yeah. But yeah. But then you notice that real quick. So all right. So I'm gonna quickly go over to the the coral portion of the show. Hopefully this doesn't bomb out. Because again, playing with new software here. Sweet. Here we go. And we're still here. Good. Excellent. Just like planned. <laughs> Live chat covered the screen. Yeah, I'm guessing it's just on mobile. Or or on like as in somebody else's username and password? No, I'm just like interesting. YouTube is not receiving enough video. Uh yeah, that's not good. Oh, well, we might. Uh, is it's being, huh? How is it now? Yeah, I'm turning all this stuff off. Oops. They are not on your Wi Fi. They are. Did yours? They should be fine. Did your game disconnect? Oh, Lexi. <laughs> it's, they said it's jumping. Let's see. I'm going to turn off a couple of things here. OK, not chopping now. OK, I think it's back to normal. OK, yeah, I, I noticed that it, there was like a, slight, uh, like a slight interruption. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we're good. Like, I saw the craziest thing on my screen because, uh, so my upload speed, right, is set to be basically 10 megabytes per second. So that, that's like, you know, like 9 kilobits per second. Not, I'm sorry, 9,000 kilobits per second, right? But let's just talk about megabits. So it should be 9. And that's really... Like my, my entire service isn't much more than than like fifteen or fifteen to twenty, and you're supposed to have that buffer to do a smooth broadcast. But then I looked over, I was seeing all the all these warnings and everything, and then it popped up to fifty. So I'm like, so you're complaining that there's not enough data, and I'm seeing five times my normal data output. It's like. Uh, but it looks like we're back, so good. Go on your lack of fiber in your area rant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I see that's that's a problem about living in like a like the farmland, is that you don't get high tech stuff. Yeah, it takes a long time before it gets this far. I mean, maybe when like Elon Musk launches his like, was it Starlink service? And then all you need is a cloudy day, and it's going to be busted. Uh, I don't know if it's quite the same because their their stuff is like in, in like super low Earth orbit, so it's not like regular satellite. It's not like Directv type of right. It's Cause, yeah, because Directv is like um, I think it's one third of the way to the moon or something. It's like those satellites are like super far away, whereas like Starlink satellites are just. And there'll be a lot more of them. Yeah, and there's yeah. like hundreds of them. So anyway, I'm, I'm waiting for my waiting for my fast Elon Musk internet because you know Central African republics, developing countries, and Copley, Ohio need better, faster internet connections. So let's get going on that. <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh, let's catch up on some some chat questions here. Uh, did you all ever think about doing a how to set up a saltwater tank and doing it step by step? I have thought of that. Um, my only issue currently with doing that is that I don't have the aquariums themselves. Um, but I think it would be a, a pretty cool series. I'm going to be doing it with my really large show tanks, um, which are going to be like over 600 gallons. But I, I also would like to try to do some more modest hobbyist sized aquariums because the, the sort of stuff that you would do on a really huge, gigantic tank isn't going to be really 
something that's going to transfer that easily. I mean, certain things will, but the, the bigger stuff certainly won't. Yeah. Like the type of technologies you're going to use is going to be completely different. Yeah. <laughs> How to mount lighting. Yeah. Uh, Alan Jackson, is there going to be a barbecue next year? That is a little bit up in the air. I haven't done enough planning just yet for that. There might be, but as of right this second, not confirmed. Smooth after changing to 720. Okay, good. Not lagging. Aaron Alexander, thank you for the $2 super chat. And, and I missed one earlier. Aaron was, Alexander again. Uh, sorry, I missed two Aaron Alexander super chats. I appreciate it, Aaron. Um, but yeah, I think that, that, that setting up a, a new tank and, and doing like the start to finish thing would be cool. The only problem with doing that is that stuff with me anyways takes forever. Like we got these tanks in June or July downstairs, my first four aquariums, and they're just now running water. So... Things happen really slowly. I'm getting impatient, Than. That's I, I got to say. I'm getting impatient. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are getting impatient. Like, <laughs> I should be the one being impatient. Yeah, I know. But clearly there's people on the internet that are being, that are being more yeah. impatient about yeah. than me. I've been making anonymous YouTube accounts and, and, and oh, commenting. Thanks. Have I banned any of them yet? I probably have. That's the focus of those. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're just there to take, take the bullet. Yeah. So at one time you were thinking about getting a, a tank upgrade and you've kind of backed off of that? For now, yes. For now. I, I, like midsummer, late summer, I started to kind of, I don't know if I'd say I lost interest or I was just busy. And I was busy with stuff. I didn't really neglect the tanks, but I didn't pay a ton of attention to them. And then I started having some issues with my some of the bounce mushrooms and chalices where they started to get bleachy and start shrinking. The mushrooms did. I have other mushrooms that are doing great. The, uh, some of them are started to bleach and shrink. Mm -hmm. I, I still have not figured it out. My best conclusion was that it was high phosphates. All my SPS looked great and did well. Um, and then some por portions of chalices would start to bleach and then die off. Uh, I've lost one or two chalices overall. Mm -hmm. And then there's two or three that I'm not sure if they'll they'll stabilize and recover. I did water changes, brought the phosphates down, and the mushrooms seem to have stabilized, but they, they don't look 100% um, and near what they used to. So it's still kind of hit or miss, I think, with them. They seem to be uh, expelling out their mouths huh. mucusy stuff occasionally. And uh, so, so I, I, I can't figure out anything other than high phosphates that were out of the ordinary. So for, for the crowd here, what do you consider high phosphates? For me, usually my phosphates were around 0.14 to 0.18, and they were up past 0.4. So for my tank, they were high. Okay, so usually phosphates should be 0 0.05 or something. Is that what like it usually shows up in nature? At? That, yeah. Okay. But I know a lot of tanks that have had his success success and including mine that have had long-term success at the higher phosphates and even higher than my 0.4 but that was probably high for my tank and so i don't know if that would really stress out mushrooms but yeah see I, okay this is this is bad advice time <laughs> but Sometimes I, I, I wonder, like, because it's nice to be able to test stuff and to say, hey, this looks like it's out of the bounds of what it normally is. So my phosphate, we just tested it this past week at 2.5, not 0.25, 2.5, which is like several thousand times higher. Now, granted, we don't have bounce mushrooms to speak of. Maybe they died a long time ago because of phosphate, but yeah. But do you have spaghetti worms? Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure I do. Okay. The ones that have the little filaments that come out and yeah. kind of sweep around and then they pull them back in. Yeah. So I've noticed that those guys um, really love to hang out right by mushrooms and right by like on the, under, on the underside of like stony corals and stuff like that. And I think that those contributed to like my my mushrooms and stuff dying would you guys like to go on a tour 
she might be able to take you on a tour for a little bit. They just want to play Fortnite. So you're, you, you thought the, the spaghetti worms were bot. You know, I've I'm had them forever, though. I'm sure I've yeah. had spaghetti worms for many years, and have never seemed to bother. Because, like, because um, nothing seems to eat them, and they, they are, they're really good for the sand bed and stuff like that, but I've noticed them kind of just stressing out corals that they're right underneath. And I, I kind of blame them directly for losing all of my mushrooms. mushrooms. Yeah, like the really nice ones that I've tried to keep. I think sand, sand sifting stars would eat them? Maybe, maybe, but I don't have sand. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I got other problems. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see. Are you going to have any T5 lighting in the new building? So this is Blue Basin Aquatics asking. I am not going to, because right now it is freezing cold outside. And we have a whole bunch of LEDs on currently downstairs. And it is plenty toasty. Now, if we had T5 instead of those LEDs, I think that it would be ridiculously uncomfortably hot, especially come summertime, to the point where um, I don't even know if I could keep the place cool enough. So what you're saying is you insulated the building too well. It's pretty well insulated, <laughs> I got to say. I gotta say it's pretty, pretty well, well insulated. insulated. It's it's mega insulated by yeah. most standards. And that's kind of the thing. It's like so all the heat that we generate inside the building stays until we do something about it. And unfortunately, when it comes like hot summertime, it's gonna be really difficult to just to to keep the whole building cool, period, let alone, oh, I've dumped several thousand watts of T5 into the into the into the envelope as well. So the radiant heating through the floor, is that also cool? Can no. You, no, that's just... That's just for the heating. Oh. Now, we are installing cooling coils for the tanks themselves. So we're starting with just 100 feet of geothermal cooling coil, and we can expand that to however much we want. But the, the, the building keeps itself so well regulated otherwise, uh, assuming you don't like cook yourself, in like tons of additional lighting, but it does regulate itself so well. So we don't think we need to bring down the temperature of the tanks quite so much with well, how we're currently set up. Are those cooling coils uh, fueled or is the water pumped through them from the cistern or? So no, so the, uh, the way that the cooling coils work is that it's a closed loop. So just imagine it's just closed piping. Yeah. And this piping, has two heat exchange areas. One is in the sump, and then one is in the cistern. So the cistern okay. stays at 55 degrees, okay. cools the water. But it's not actually back. using cistern, cistern water. Correct, because cistern water is really gross, and you don't want to have like the, that bacteria gum up, gumming gum up. up your pumps. Yeah. Because we have that problem. So long ago at the greenhouse, we didn't know that you're not supposed to do certain things. And we did certain things that caused like bacteria to grow in our pipes. And that caused all kinds of problems. Like, so we started getting like clogs. I was like, what's going on here? So when we finally flushed out these things, there's these big like orange sausages came out of our pipes. <laughs> and it's like, oh, hey. Bacteria mats. Yeah, and I was talking to the plumber and, and I was like, hey, have you ever seen anything like this before? Like, you know, how often does this happen? He's like, this never should happen. <laughs> Do you understand? Never should happen like this. But going back, so I was started to have problems with my tank and then I, it kind of killed my motivation for a new tank. And just with where things were with uh, the timeline that it would be, I decided it wouldn't be a good idea by, by trying to squeeze it in by the end of this year or before I go to Hawaii next year. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to wait. That sounds like some first world problems. Yeah, yeah. well, maybe, <laughs> maybe it is, but it's a time thing and a stress thing. I was like, you know what, I'm going to hold off until maybe I'll get it. Maybe, I'm not even sure, get it in the works. So that when I get back next year after being away for a couple of weeks. And it's super stressful on top of all that too, you know. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's fun to design and, and have on paper. But I think that once it comes time to pull the trigger and start working the logistics of getting the tank moved into your space, 
that, all that stuff. Yeah, and to add on to the stress, I was just even stressing a little bit, thinking about, well, I have a tank set up, two tanks set up, where I want to set up the new tanks. So yeah. I would have to move that stuff. Break it all temporarily down. Temporarily hold it and put the new tank in and get that up and running. And it just is, yeah. 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 So I'm going to have huge holding tanks in my family room, which, you know, my wife will want to kill me for. So, yeah. And then yes. not only just curious about these fish that I've had for, well, six, seven, eight years, you know, the ones I don't want to lose and be like, oh, gosh, are they doing all right? Hopefully and, they don't jump out of the, the holding container. Exactly. And dog, you know, exactly. finds it or something. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be bad. I'd rather the dog find it than my wife find it on the floor. <laughs> I, I I never can tell if your wife likes the hobby or not. Oh, she would prefer that I. Not yeah, dabble it's like. In it. I don't I don't know how supportive she is of all this. No, she's tolerant. Tolerant. Right? You'd say mom's tolerant of the aquariums, but she's not a big fan of them. Yeah, I think, and, and it was more t the time commitment that I yeah. would put into it. Uh, I don't know. I, I I could I could certainly see the the concern. But I don't think it's going to be any more than what it is now. Oh, a new tank? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, it's the yeah. same. In fact, in fact, the real appeal to, um, there's a bigger tank's always the real appeal. But the, and another aspect is I can design this again and learn from my mistakes from my previous right. tanks and get this one exactly how I want it and uh, be happy with that and implement it. And like I was saying, your closed loop, idea of because i have what i have three four five gyres mm -hmm. and those things gum up and slow down they pretty gum quick. up instantly yes and so they have to be serviced or you're losing a lot of flow over the course of three four weeks and then even other power heads you know if they stop working it's so a major pain let me quickly answer two pleases dollar 99 super chat question did you vapor barrier over your insulation we did yeah so it's um we, I think it's like we have a six mil liner between our paneling and the insulation. Um, now we've gone through that, that vapor barrier many times already, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes. But I mean, the air is pretty dry. I mean, even with uh, our, our current um, level of water in there, it's, yeah, it, the, the air is pretty well handled, I would say. And especially once you crank on the air conditioning, it's, the, the air conditioner is optimized to reduce humidity also. So hopefully we don't have to then add on additional dehumidification, but we'll see. Right under that, Brian said that he had dipped his trachea in Lugol's. In, in Lugol's. Yeah, Lugol's can help a lot, especially well, with the bacterial stuff. I was going to say, if I had to guess with the mushrooms, I would say that my guess is that it's some sort of bacterial issue, like a, some sort of infection type of thing. So um, speaking of like some kind of infection sort of thing, I haven't run UV in a long time. You so said you don't run UV at all currently. Correct. So uh, one of uh, the guys that works here, Luke, you know, he was like saying, you know, there's a whole bunch of benefits that you might see going with, with UV that you might want to try. And I'm like, I I'm kind of worried because I think that my, my corals are like really happy eating the bacteria and whatever phyto that's in the water and, and my water's like yellow. And, and he's like, yeah, you w you w let let's try this. And so, because he was saying that like his, his water went from yellow to clear because of UV. The sort of stuff I was attributed to ozone was happening with just UV. And so we're giving, we're giving that a go. And, and maybe some of the bacterial issues that you're running into might... Cut down on its yeah. spread or Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Richard Snyder, hey, th Title Gardens, your videos are the best. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, Alan Jackson's asking, what protein skimmers are going to be used in the new building? Uh, we're going to be using, um, what are those things called? Reef Octopus 8000s. It's the biggest one they sell with a single pump for recirculation. That's what we're going to be using out there. Uh, I've used it once before in one of the systems at the greenhouse. It's pretty good. And for the price, they're pretty cheap. So there's that. Relatively speaking. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could do a lot worse for a lot smaller, for a lot more, a lot more money. Um, now, speaking of cheap, 
this is something that I kind of learned uh, a little late. But going back to the, our talk about closed loops, there are different grades of um, Schedule 80 plumbing that I didn't realize. Like thickness? No, not thickness, but a, you know, country of origin type stuff. Oh. So I just figured, you know, I want to get like really nice bulkheads. So I got like the really thick uh, gasketed Schedule 80 bulkheads from like Bulk Group Supply. Yeah. I guess those are not that great. I heard that those are the cheapest ones you can get that are still Schedule 80. And you really, if you, if you have like a mission critical application, you probably should not buy those and buy something that's like a lot more made in America. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, because from what I understand, they are like the, the Chinese budget Schedule 80 stuff. And I can kind of see some design elements of it where um, a better designed one would be better. For example, the, uh, the interior, uh, what is that, that, that nut on, on the bulkhead? It, it doesn't have like, um, like the hex pattern for like channel locks or anything like that. It's just, um, I guess like perforated, not perforated, but has like the ribbing it, yes, for but, your hand tightening. Yeah. Hand tightening. If you use a wrench or something, you're going to smooth those You're going to strip those up. off. Yeah. And then in, in my case, well, for any large tank that you're going to need an inch and a half bulkhead, you're not going to have this open access to it. That entire bottom of that tank needs to be supported by something, whether it's marine grade plywood or, in my case, um, like half inch PVC. So then you, you have to you know, cut out a hole large enough to even manipulate it. And so you might not even be able to get your fingers even in there, and especially not with tooling. Mm -hmm. So um, in the future, I'm going to be looking to get like a higher quality bulkhead. Because we, we, we don't have any leaks right now, but you know things change. Like the just changing from fresh water to salt water increases pressure, and all of a sudden you might get like a micro leak. Or any number of things could happen for like a little micro leak to start, and you want to make sure that you know your bulkheads are up to the task. But like uh, the rest of my plumbing though is like super high end. Like Spears, like Spears makes like great valves and stuff like that. And so the um, the wholesale price on my Spears gate valves that I'm using are like seventy dollars per valve. It's insane. Yeah, but they're worth it if they yeah, do their job. Exactly. Uh, have you? Or anybody else out there? Have they? Have you ever had any problems with your closed loop, like the drilling or the the bulkhead or leaking? Because if they, after over time, not initially, because mm -hmm. initially is not the problem. But if you're a year into your tank and something starts, and I'm not sure if it's very common. If, if it doesn't leak to start with, it's not gonna leak over time, right? That was a huge concern of mine That's also. my concern and if, if it, I were to go with a closed loop. And it is a concern of mine because it's right at the bottom of the tank, right? Yeah, there's nothing that you have to drain the tank. But at the same time, it's like, are you worried about any other bulkhead? Like on an overflow box? Well, that's not as... Um, as much water volume and pressure and everything. And it's not as difficult to remedy. You don't have to drain your tank to, to deal okay. with that. Yeah. So like you're, you have a, a closed loop at the bottom of your tank mm -hmm. and you need to do something, you gotta drain the tank. Which for your like propagation tanks isn't that, it, it would still not be fun, but if it's a display tank, you got all sorts of stuff in there for me, for a home aquarium ho hobbyist who has a family yeah. room, that a yeah. wife would be mad. <laughs> yeah, that could be a problem, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to think if there, there are ways to, um, if there's ways to service that even in a show tank. I don't know. Mm -hmm. there, there, there must be. But um, yeah, no, that that's definitely is a worry. I'm just curious if anyone has a real world experience where the the there was a, cr a crack over time or something occurred yeah well i'm also just thinking like there's other ways to do closed loops where you go in through the side panel so maybe you don't have to like maybe it's the top one <laughs> on the side panel <laughs> like the, 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 yeah there's there's different ways that, that closed loops could be done but i don't think that there's any way to like have a hole not potentially leak yeah I, I, yeah I and it, but like 
like I said, I'm, a lot of aquariums have closed loops. I'm just curious if how, you know, you're not going to find statistics, but what is the likelihood or yeah. what has occurred? And I'll just, I guess, wait over time to see yeah, what happens. We'll see to what yours. happens. Because <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe I do rip my, all of mine out and then replace them with like some made in America ones. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's see. Flu-like symptom five. Your water quality always appears top-notch. It is, it is not. Um, and the frags look great with their current camera setup. Always enjoyable. Watch your stream. Thanks. Uh, I, I think that our water, um, you're probably looking at a phosphate level of two point something. And our nitrates, we don't test because I think that we pegged it out. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so just a damn. damn. Um, yeah, but it, it's weird, like, like I don't know why we're getting away with some of the stuff that we do get away with. I'm wondering, it, it shouldn't be a volume issue if you have the high concentrations of these certain things. It should be a practical issue. Um, but we, I mean, knock on wood, like, I shouldn't even jinx it, but we, we're having a lot of really good success. Now, we are, however, going to try to get those numbers down lower, but super slowly, because the, the worry that I have, especially with GFO and, and, and phosphate reducers like that, is that they're hyper-aggressive, and the, the last times that we've messed with stuff like that, we, we even used half the required dosage, and sometimes like a quarter of the dosage, and it still had negative effects. So I want to like take it down ultra slow over the course of like two months. Yeah, I actually, I used GFO for the first time in a long time to bring my phosphates down. And the initial, I almost used a full container and it took it down from 0.4 down to like 0.3 or 0.25 over the course mm -hmm. of a few days. And I let, I let it go, even though it wasn't reducing it further at that point in time. And then like two weeks later, I, I put a fresh batch in there and that's when I got down to, I'm about 0.12 or mm. 0.13 so mm. but it does it does take it down pretty quick it only takes a couple days yeah. for that to take in my tank to take it down right so. and and you have a fairly large system yeah so going back to the topic of closed loops diacanthus reef uh mentioned something that's kind of kind of cool i'm partial to the false wall with closed loops coming from the top keeps the holes out of the tank walls and bottom, which gives peace of mind. Just make sure to prime them properly. So what you could do is you could have the closed loop operate from your yeah. Euro brace. So you, um, so actually. Oh, I, okay. So partial the false wall with the closed loop coming from the top. So you could, I mean, theoretically you could have the entire thing above your tank. Right, both the intake and output with the plumbing coming down, but, but you do have to find a way to prime the pump. Yes, I was gonna say. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Aurelius one eight seven. Why not do a giant thousand gallon macro algae attached to your system? So, uh, in a home, I need to do a video about this about refugiums because I, I did a refugium video. I think I need to do an updated refugium video. So I think refugiums make a lot of sense for a home hobbyist, where I think that on a commercial scale, they make less and less sense. Because the, the number one real big concern in a commercial setup is like pest control and algae control. And you're kind of inviting both with a refugium. Because in a refugium, you're really limiting uh, your the, the sort of animals uh, that would take care of such problems. Like a lot of algae issues are taken care of by like herbivores, but you don't want that in your refugium. The whole point is to keep that stuff out. The whole point is to not have wrasses eat all the microfauna, things of that sort. Now, it is possible, I'm sure, to religiously quarantine everything, including stuff that goes into the refugium. In practice, I'm going to go ahead and bet that those creatures are better at surviving your quarantine and dipping process than you are at control, keeping them out of a out of a refugium, and then they, their population will just explode, and that's now all plumbed into your system. So that that's kind of my big worry about going with something like that. 
Have you ever used Vibrant? Because Miguel Maya is asking about this for allergy control. I did use it for a while and it was very effective against um, bubble algae. It, really? Over the course of, that's amongst the first to go um, when you're using it. And uh, I, I believe it's also, I didn't have it, but I believe I know uh, some friends who used it and the uh, bryopsis ended up turning white and dying off too. Interesting. So it, ta it takes a little while. It, it, it takes three to four weeks to really take hold on it. And I don't know exactly if it's attacking the algae or taking away its food source or inhibiting it in some way. Um, there's a whole thread on it um, on Reef to Reef that I haven't looked at it for a while, but there was people tracking their progress and you could see their pictures over time of those the bubble algae turning white and dying off. So what is Vibra? Does anybody know? I don't know. What's actually in it? Uh, is it an antibiotic or? It might be a bacterial. I don't know. I yeah. shouldn't say. I don't know for sure. Because um, it's been a while since I've used it, but it was successful. Yeah. Luke, uh, the guy that works here, Luke, he uh, had really good success with it. Um, opening up all of his zoas that were kind of like closed and upset looking because a lot of times uh, like film algaes and stuff mm -hmm. like that kind of uh, irritate a zoanthid and kind of close it up and then it, then it really starts to like cake on yep and he's like yeah I use vibrant to handle this separate algae issue and within a couple of days all of my zoas just exploded open and so I'm like I'm interested in trying that but I'm always so worried to try something new because it's like so much is at risk. It's mm -hmm. not like, I'm just going to do it on my 60-gallon uh, frag tank. Yeah. That, that's not a thing here. It's like, oh, all of your, yeah. your, your thousand gallons just died. Yep. <laughs> that's, what, that's what usually happens when I try something new. Uh, Willow Hawkins, should I buy, and I apologize in advance if I'm like skipping around and missing 80% of your questions. When we have guests over. I'm distracting. We, we, we miss it. So should you buy a gold torch that's at your LFS? Go for it. <laughs> They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. They're pretty. Yeah, yeah uh, like gold, like torches, well, so um, Nathan works in finance. And, you know, it's the whole buy low, sell high thing, right? So right now is actually a terrible time to buy gold torches. <laughs> With that in mind. They're pretty expensive. <laughs> it's, it's the most expensive it's ever been currently. So uh, It's probably not a good investment, but it's, uh, if that's something that you want, it's, yeah. that's the other story. Don't buy it to think you're going to make money over time on it. Because you're not going to. I'll guarantee you that it's right gonna now. It's going to be a while. If you, if you grow it out well. You... Is that even a thing? Growing out? Growing out like gold torches from Australia? I, I have a gold torch, but I'm not sure if it's Australian. I'm going to go ahead and bet that that gold torch is going to die before it adds an additional head. No, I, mine's grown out. No, we're no like, oh. I, in general. Yeah, okay. Because I think that like the Australian gold torches, they grow so slowly. They don't bud, so they don't have add, add like additional heads. They're more like heads. splitting. Yeah, they take forever to do their split. Mm -hmm. They're sensitive as all get out. Any number of things could bother a, a torch coral. The, the gold ones tend to be a little bit more fragile than the other ones. So if, if that's like, oh, I can make my money back someday, you're probably not going to do that. Yeah. That's not likely. Okay, so Vibrant is a 95% bacteria blend, 1% amino acids, vinegar, and other ingredients. Interesting. So it's a bacteria thing. And it must be some sort of bacteria that goes directly for... Algae. whatever certain algaes like because and, and use that up because it it does it is successful in the course of a couple of weeks so interesting huh. I, I I'd like to try it on some some tank but we'll see <laughs> we'll see if I ever actually pull the trigger on that uh, okay so Carrie reefer 500 hey Than, when will the new f uh, facility be up and running uh, real soon. So the plumber is downstairs working right now. Is that as the, we speak? The long-term plumber who's been who's yeah. done most most everything. Yeah. So by the end of today, uh, the first four tanks should be ready for salt water. So then we would have to then cycle the tanks 
and then quarantine all the uh, prospective new arrivals to come into here. Uh, we're still in the process of getting the quarantine tanks built, but that should be happening fairly soon here. And we're probably going to do like a, a month and a half to two month quarantine. Where are you setting those up? Uh, they're mobile. So we're going to be able to scoot them around if necessary. So we have these carts, these inexpensive utility carts, and I'm, I'm having some acrylic tanks and sumps made for that. So we should be able to... to mobile quarantine. Yeah, just, so we'll just tuck it away when we're not using it and then you know, bring it back out, quarantine a bunch of stuff, that sort of thing. Must be nice. <laughs> and then we can also dip massive amounts of stuff in them if we need to, too. But yeah, you know, if, if it turns out to be a good design, definitely should copy it because it's, hey, you know, it's out of the way. Mm -hmm. No one can complain. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's kind of the idea. Uh, I, I'm going to, so, so right off, the, right off the top, okay, I am not sponsored by Rossmont, but I met their CEO over when I visited the UK and came away like really impressed you know hearing about how his like design philosophy of the pumps and controllers and skimmers and stuff like that who is this rossmont it's an italian company they they basically only make pumps and skimmers currently uh, we just installed four of their like power heads that they kind of look like coralias but they're 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 like a ni it's like a nicer looking coralia type right and I'm, and i'm sure that it that comparison is doing them a terrible disservice Okay, it's more, it's more like a Tunzi. Okay. okay. More like a Tunzi. There you go. Uh, they are really impressive. Like, we put uh, two of them on opposite ends of, the, uh, of a, like a 90-gallon tank, and they can each move 4,100 gallons per hour. And it's like they could empty this tank out if they wanted yeah. to. Like, they're so strong, and they're completely controllable, which is kind of neat because you can actually, like, double tap on this little app and you can you can set the the timings of everything. It's pretty slick. Are they available over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know which retailer sells them. Maybe Bulk Reef might sell them. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I came away pretty impressed with that. You can push the chairs together, children. They're taking they're taking turns on Fortnite. I'm going to step away for a moment. Okay. So Nathan has to do some parenting. One sec. Okay, so that... We're going to walk outside the room. That's cool. Uh, okay, so Steve Cunningham is wondering, how do I buy coral that's on this stream? Okay. So you could go to titlegardens.com and check out the live sale link. You'll see this video here embedded and uh, you'll see the, the item numbers listed. So for example, we're on item number 67. And if you like that item, you can just find the, the one that just says number 67, throw it into your shopping cart, and check out like it's any other type of coral. Okay, Kevin Fortune is asking, can I dip in elegance? Yes. Uh, there's not a ton of stuff that usually bothers in elegance. I think the only things that I've ever seen are uh, some crabs, but the dip isn't going to really mess with the crab. I, I forget what those crabs are called. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a, just like a regular little little crab that hangs out right in the middle of one of those colonies of elegance. Uh, so that's that, but a dip won't really bother too much. You just have to site inspect it and remove it whenever you see one of those. Uh, then there are like some uh, like flatworms that sometimes can mess with a, a, a coral like that, like a catalophilia or a euphilia sometimes. But like just a couple of dips and normally those go away. Having said that there's a really big euphilia eating flatworm, those are much more difficult to handle. But like the, the, the smaller like brown ones and the smaller tan colored ones that might be on an elegance, not usually that big of an issue. One production, what's going on, Than? Not much, just hanging out with you guys. Nathan's here with his two kids. The kids are fighting over a Fortnite uh, Nintendo Switch. So he had to take a step away for a sec.
Robert North, you're completely crazy to think that a gold torch won't grow once it's fragged. They are a liability to the point that retailers should think twice before even buying it from a wholesaler. That is how fragile they are. So they cost quite a large sum of money to even acquire. Oftentimes it comes with strings attached, like in order to buy this gold torch, you have to buy like 10 other torches, stuff like that, also which are expensive. And on top of all of that, they are very fragile. So you could lose your entire investment right on that. Now, it's a little bit less worrisome for a hobbyist to then buy it from a retailer because it's been in the aquarium system slightly longer, but they're insanely slow growing too. I think that, um, yeah, pretty much in all of my years of having gold torches, they might have grown zero additional heads. Okay, Tattoo Dancer 91. I just made a good earning on frags sold locally. Uh, Zoas, nice leathers and Monty frags. Business-wise, to expand, should I get more into the same or spread out the supply like Acros? So if you're, it kind of depends on, on what your situation is as far as your, your ability to grow out. Because, um, you know, if you are, are really limited in space, you kind of have to focus on, on the things that will sell. Once you have like a ton of space, you can then kind of, um, you know, branch out into just random stuff that you like. One production, gall crab, that's correct, yes. Forgot what those things were. Robert Norris, are you saying that Jake Adams cut up his gold torch and glued them to a, a tile now for no reason? Jake isn't in the business of selling coral, so he can wait five years or however long it takes to, to grow additional heads. But um, pretty much I know of zero commercial operations that are trying to cultivate euphilia long term, like zero of them. Um, I don't know anybody in Australia that's even really trying it. I think Ultra Corals was. Okay, so by the way, we're talking about like a 50,000 gallon facility. They might have been trying it. So it's not something that is a great use of time or space or light. Yeah, there's just certain corals that like when it comes to aquaculture just simply make no sense. I would say that half of the LPS out there don't make a ton of sense for aquaculture. Uh, like we're not talking about like chop shop type stuff where it's like, oh, I just took this larger thing, cut it into five pieces, now I have five, five things to sell. That's not really it. I'm talking about let's just say that the faucet gets shut off where you get no more favia. What's going to happen in about 10 years is no one's going to have favia. Like, that's just how that goes. Between no stores trying to cultivate it because it takes forever to grow, to hobbyists just like losing them over time, there's gonna be no favia in the market. So like things like that, euphilia, or not, well, yeah, euphilia, but like cattle euphilia, elegance corals. Um, so I heard that acanthophilia. Do you have any acanthophilias at all? No. I don't think I saw any in your tank last time. No. But Supposedly with acanthophilia, so those are like the, the big meat corals, they kind of look like a, a scalemia with like a rough texture. I heard that those are done. So most of like the really cool ones came from Indonesia. And then the, the kind of the, um, the mint chocolate chip colored ones came from Australia. They're kind of the more boring green and speckled brownish ones, right? But I guess what was happening was uh, people were illegally smuggling them into Australia to get an Australian permit to export it back out. So Australia removed it from the quota entirely. So if you guys happen to like, like acanthophilia and maybe your local fish store or something like that has one, you might want to pull the trigger on that because from what I understand, there's no more coming in. And that kind of loosely goes back to what I was talking about. Like certain things aren't possible for aquaculture right now. Yeah.
So, yeah. Psychedelic babe, let's try again. Hello, Than. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, yeah, I apologize for not getting to every comment. Um, obviously, guests are here, so sometimes like the focus gets we go off on a tangent. Slightly. Yeah, we just start talking about whatever. Uh, okay, Deacanthus does not like the aggressive sweeper tentacles on torches. Gotcha. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. Can't grow Fabio to save my life, but have no issues with acros. Acros are really popular. Um, do you still, by any chance, have like the like Walt Disney and all that? Yeah, I have the Walt Disney, the Homewrecker, um, the Confetti, several other ones. Yeah, I haven't lost the SBS. Huh? It was just the mushrooms. Yep, mushrooms and uh, some chalices. So, yeah, like I, um, I bought a. Uh, what? No, it was a Walt Disney. I got a Walt Disney and I got a Orange Passion, I think. Oh, yeah, I have an Orange Passion, too. Yeah, I got a, one of each of those from Cherry Corals and they died in like a week. <laughs> so I think one thing is like, like well, I think my, 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 uh, my parents remounted them to, some, to another plug because there was like some, some leafy algae that we didn't want on the yeah. original plug. Yep. And so they remounted it and it's like, that's not a good idea. Yeah, they don't, they don't like that change plus no. the the glue. The change, yeah, the, the movement. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they both just like crapped out. It's yeah. like, oh, that's a few hundred dollars down the mm. drain. Mm. That's kind of the problem with like with buying like really expensive stuff with the hopes to propagate it. I mean, it's not like super mega crushing for us just because like we're in the business of, of it and we're kind of... Um, you know, we don't have to put all of our eggs in one basket like that. But so, I mean, for a hobbyist, it's like I need to get this one coral, and I want to propagate this one coral out. It, that yeah. that's kind of soul crushing. Do you have any issues with cyano? Because there's a lot of people asking about cyano right now. I occasionally have it crop up. Um... And what I've done in the past is uh, chemi clean to mm -hmm. just clear it out, and that generally works. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's oftentimes it's it's months to a year before I see it again, and then it does crop up. So it's almost like like a regular chemi clean thing where you just like I don't do, do it on a regular basis. I don't. I only do it once I see it, and I do one treatment. And then go through their process of like a half over a major water change after I forget if it's 24 or 48 hours. And then I'll do another one and add carbon mm -hmm. and, you know, clear it out. So I, I think that somebody in chat in a, in a different live show uh, was talking about how it works. I guess it like starves out the oxygen or something like that that's needed for cyano. It, it definitely has an oxidizing component to it because your skimmer will go crazy. Yeah. So... I don't know if it, if, yeah, I don't know. They do, I mean, they do tell you it's going to lower your oxygen level mm -hmm. and to make sure that your, your aquarium's well aerated for, yeah. you know, the stuff that you want to live. I've never lost any fish or corals from it. Yeah, I haven't either. So, yeah, it, it's, it seemed to work pretty aggressively, like the one or two times that we've tried it. Yeah, it works within, it works as advertised and mm -hmm. how it, what it says it's going to do, it does it, so... Your mileage may vary. I've seen people blame it for losses, which is far and few in between, but I've seen people say it caused a, prob a major problem and they lost a bunch of stuff, but I've never yeah. had any issues with it. And I know there are people who use it like kind of like on a monthly or quarterly basis preemptively. Huh. They just kind of, that's they started to see that pattern and they used it. I know people have used it um, to help with, uh, the film, whatever it is, film algae or bacteria that grow uh -huh. on zoanthids oh. that make them close up, that chemiclean oftentimes helps from be that as well. So, so yeah, maybe between like chemiclean and um, vibrant, vibrant that could be a, that could be a thing. Yeah. So we suffer here from uh, like some seasonal variational stuff, right? And sometimes, especially like comes like springtime, 
or like fall where there's like more pollen in the air, more pollen ends up getting into the tanks of the greenhouse. And I think that that contributes to then like a small, which used to be huge algae blooms. Like back in the day, it was disgusting. But nowadays it's not bad necessarily, but I could definitely see where like some zoas are like staying closed a little longer. And I'm thinking, oh no, I've got huge pest issues and I don't, but it's this algae stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe some uh, prophylactic treatment just for seasonal algae. It's on se seasonal allergies. <laughs> yeah, seasonal allergies. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't have allergy issues, but apparently my, my zoas does. do. Yeah. yeah. Chemically clean helps. Uh, somebody just said turbo start. I think somebody was asking what bacteria should they use to start oh. up a reef tank with drywall, dry rock. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. So I've never used Turbo Start, but I have a gallon of it sitting in this fridge right outside here. Um, it was, who is it? Whoa, some pterodactyl flying around in here. It's a big bug. Um, Jacob from Fritz uh, brought over a gallon of, for us to test out because I've, I've never really messed with like the bacteria stuff to start tanks. Yeah, I haven't used it to start tanks. Um... Years ago, just to kind of, I always, it was just a theory to help biodiversity over time after the tank's been running for a while. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Biodigest, is it? They're, they're little glass vials. And I actually ordered some recently to thinking maybe I need to. Who stay. makes that? I don't know. I'll have to tell you. I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to do some research. So, but that's what I've used over time. But I never really tried to jumpstart a tank. I haven't really started many tanks, so. Yeah, I, I, just, I just sit there and wait patiently. <laughs> um, somebody was asking about, uh, sorry, uh, Reefer Nest Reefer was asking, do Montipora fight each other? Yes. Yes, they do. They're not hyper, super, mega aggressive, so you're not going to like have a situation of two Montiporas touching and both of them completely die. But at that boundary, yeah, they're going to fight and kill each other. And one's going to win. This is a Prodibio bio digest. Okay. Prodibio. Prodibio? So, Pro I come from an older school when it comes to this hobby of not messing with a lot of stuff in bottles. But that was because coming into this hobby, there used to be a ton of just like snake oil products, right? Now I feel like there's 10 times as many things in bottles as there ever used to be. But I think that they all work now, which is like weird. <laughs> so None of this works, all snake oil. Everything works, it's great. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think of that? Like, do you, do you kind of get that feeling as well? There's so many. Like, look at um, like Brightwell, for example. Because uh, I, um, I was getting some samples from Brightwell just to try out some different things, right? Because they, they had approached me about some collaboration. And I'm like, I would love to do a collaboration. Don't get me wrong. But I've literally never used any of your stuff before. Just, I've, I, I don't even know where to start with talking about anything Brightwell does. And so they're, you know, we'll, we'll just put together like a care package and just, you know, just pick a couple of things that you'd like to try. And I went to their website and there's like 5,000 chemicals that they sell. <laughs> it's like, there's, there's like no joke, hundreds of products that they sell. And I'm just thinking, I don't even, why are there six types of phytoplankton? Like there, there was so much stuff. And... I'm completely doing, overwhelmed. You're like, I've been doing this wrong for years. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just them. It's so then you, you again go, oh, yeah. go to Fritz and, and Fritz. Like uh, I was talking to Sean Hale from Fritz. Uh, we were both in the UK at the same trade show booth, even, and um, you know, and he was like, you know, you know, talking about their salt. And I'm like, you know, it's it's too much of a risk for me to change salt. And then it occurred to me that beyond their salt, I don't even know what else they do. And then he shows me like. A dozen chemical products that they have, you know, it's just sitting right there as part of the trade show display. And I had no idea what any of this stuff was. So, like, b besides the salt and like the, the bio start, turbo start. Turbo start. Yeah, it's like, it's, that's just like two companies. 
The Red Sea makes yeah, a whole bunch say, of stuff. Red Sea's got it. Yeah. Um, Freaking Triton with their every single bottle of individual elements and mm -hmm. stuff. Like lots of stuff. What's the fastest growing high end acro? For this is for Carry Reefer five hundred. I actually I think the uh, those um. What's the the home record? What type of core? Tenuous. The tenuous. Tenuouses grow really quick for me. Really? Yeah. Why do you usually just die? <laughs> well, well, no. Uh, so I'm not sure what what variety that they are, but a lot of our plating ones do really well. We have. A, we like have a the lot Montes? of no, like like um, like table forming acros. Oh. We have a whole bunch of like the red ones and the yellow ones. I'm, I'm so up on my high end acros. <laughs> it's like soon, soon once you get like these indoor tanks around in acros. Yeah, I thought I think tenuous has grow pretty quick. So you may be jumping on the bandwagon a little late because a lot of there's a lot of tenuouses out there, but I've seen some newer ones. The, Cherry Corals has a pink one. It, yeah. uh, I forget what it's, something pink. Highlighter pink, or I I just saw it for the first time. They, they, they had some pretty cool acros. Yeah, that sure. one was really cool looking. Yeah, and, and I, I do appreciate how like fastidious they are about keeping their tanks under control and things like that. Because you know they're sitting in like a gold mine in this one aquarium. It's like if anything goes wrong in this one aquarium, yeah, it's, Todd yeah. and Brett are gonna be so sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be so I'd be super sad. Yeah, exactly. That's got uh, uh, Do you count this two hundred ish coral today? Yes, I think one nine four is the official count. Uh, Warhood, whenever anyone says water change, it hurts me on the inside. But why? They're so easy. I do constant water changes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like being all like super cynical, but it's like if you have a 75 gallon tank, the, how, the difficulty of you doing a water change is rather minimal. So, the, the, sorry, there's no sympathy. I'm not even, <laughs> even going to sugarcoat it. Man up, do a water change. But the um, so the the automatic water change system that you're running, you do about seven gallons a day, right? Depending on how I feel, I sometimes I'm like I think I need more, so I'll pump it up to like twelve or fourteen gallons a day. Yeah. Um, and if I don't think I, just, I have no rhyme or reason, if things aren't doing well or there's some sort of problem, I'll bump it up to fourteen, fifteen gallons a day. Uh huh. Otherwise, I'm keeping it around eight to 10. Yeah. And okay. I will do, I'll do a 50 gallon water change in between, just like that if I need to. Not with the system, I'll just do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. You know, well, siphon it out like and man. pump it back in. <laughs> yeah. I'll get my ax out and you know, we'll, we'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll carve I'll, out a bucket out of, out of yep, a tree stump. Yep, and do a water change. There you go. Yeah, so I, I was, um, when designing this building, I, I was thinking about doing like an automatic water change system like the one that Nathan has, which is basically two dosing pumps, right? One pulls it out, goes down the drain, one refills it with pre-made salt water, and then you just have that run like clockwork, X number of gallons per day, depending on the size of your system, right? Uh, but it turns out just like the way that we do maintenance here, it was much easier just to implement something where we just top it off with salt water on demand. So at the end of the day, it's like, oh, our tanks are low because we've been either you know, taking uh, water out to make a dip for corals, we've been shipping corals out, we had some evaporation or whatnot, so we just test the, the salinity, top off as needed with fresher salt water. So I guess my automatic water change is called staff members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, 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 we do, we, so we were doing that for like a long time, and then it was like, you know, we haven't done like a big sweeping water change in a while. And that's when it's like, yeah, okay, we need to start doing that again because I think there's like a big benefit to doing that. I'm starting to get concerned. I have too much coral now. A lot of the SPS and the, the display tank have, have grown into larger colonies. And I just feel that there's a high concentration of coral per water mm -hmm. and that they just got to be sucking stuff out of that water that 
you know, because they're just such a high concentration. So I actually want to take out like three large colonies. I didn't, I was going to bring some today, mm -hmm. but we had soccer and I didn't have time to, I wasn't going to, I didn't know what to do with it while I was at soccer. I'm going to go ahead and blame his kids for why I didn't get a whole bunch of free acros. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but I do want to remove some of these things and the, they're blocking flow and they're sucking up everything that they, that coral would want to suck up. So. We are, um, we're in a similar boat, but with worse corals. <laughs> so like, whereas like he has like high end acros and stuff like that, soaking up a lot of- To be fair, um, these aren't all the high end acros, but. I have like Pasilopora. I was gonna bring some of that because, <laughs> oh, <were you? laughs> yeah. Don't do that. I'd be, I'd be mad about that. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna be doing some, some giveaway packs. Uh, of like random stuff. <laughs> you you in a five gallon bucket full of Pasola <laughs> Uh we're yeah there's there's like a, probably like a, a good dozen species that we need to thin out of like other stuff, not just Pasilopora, but like a dozen or so things. And I'm just thinking about like, you know what, we're just gonna do some giveaway packs. I'm gonna grow our mailing list a little bit mm -hmm. and be like, hey, shipping is on us. Two please, four ninety nine. Thank you. My Tunzi ATO did a water change for me last night at three a.m. It's a first failure. That stinks. That stinks. So, I, I've never really messed with auto top offs from my aquarium. Like the only auto top off that we currently use right now is to um, to make fresh water for our thousand gallon holding container, but. I mean, you have an ATO, right? Yes, and I, yes. And okay. then I also um, dose like three liters of Kalkwasser a day. Okay. But I still have an ATO because that does not cover the total evaporation. Right, and, and do, you, do you limit the amount of water that's in that ATO? It's not like it has infinite water potentially. Uh, no, actually it, it's, it's 30 some gallons and it's hooked up to my um, well, you know, I turn off my uh, reverse osmosis filter, so it it still could be 35 gallons, 10% of my tank. 35 is a lot, but uh, it, that's not bad. But I may, I, I set it up like that before I had my, um, well, I, it doesn't refill automatically because I turn off my, I mm -hmm. didn't used to turn off my water filter, so it would just fill back that reservoir. But in the original, yeah. That's yeah. super scary. You could be like two please, and, yeah, and end up with a freshwater tank. Or, yeah, that would be bad. Uh, let's see. Does any chillaxing is asking? Does anyone know what causes brown jelly disease? I think it's just a bacteria infection, isn't it? Yes, I've had it happen on a gold torch twice when I accidentally knocked over the gold, gold torch into the sand bed. And I mounted back up and it looked all right. And then it, within a day or two, it started to brown jelly and it happened twice. Hmm. And I, I do believe it's a bacteria and it is a bad it's, smelling. It's like the Ebola of yes. mycelia disease. It's like, oh, yeah, yes. you, have, you have brown jelly? Yeah, kill it, it with fire, whatever. Or whatever just wait 24 on. hours and you don't have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, because it's all gone. The, yeah. The, but yeah. it will, yeah, it'll keep spreading. And I've had it happen on a Duncan colony before too. Yeah, it's 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 so super frustrating to have that that type of thing happen because it's so it's so fast. You're like, what the heck happened here? Yep. So they're so they're uh, in chat. They're kind of talking back and forth about um, light levels. Have you done a PAR test in your tank lately? Not lately, but I haven't changed anything since the last time. And like my PAR tops off at 300 at the very top. So yeah, it's not super intense. It's pretty bright though. Like, uh, so Luke in chat brought his over, and uh, it, it was kind of enlightening to see how different our tanks here were as far as like lighting goes, because we have so many different implementations, and you know, some we have old bulbs, all kinds of stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, it turned out some of our tanks were like super dim, like fifty mm. at the top. <laughs> And then some of ours were like 400 at the top. So huge discrepancies. But now that we have an idea of what all the different tanks are, we can say, okay, 
this might be better suited for such and such corals. Let's try that. Let's yeah. like try lowering these lights a bit and raising these guys up a little bit. So it's, it was actually helpful. Sometimes I, I kind of think that like a light meter is overrated. But I think that's it's overrated in the context of if you have one aquarium, you should kind of know what your one aquarium is. Yeah. Um, so you be less needing of one just to be constantly like, oh, I need to always be monitoring my light. But when you have like 50 random tanks all over the place, that could be more of an issue where it's like, yeah, you should probably figure out what you're actually having intensity wise. Yeah, and they're talking about Gen 4 Pros. They're pretty good. I I've, haven't actually grown coral under it, but... <laughs> they look nice down there. They, they light look, the place up. They do. <laughs> and they're, they're pretty... I, I was going to say that they're pretty warm, right? They, they generate some heat, but they might not. I have 60 of them. That's yeah, what's yeah, generating say, Relatively <laughs> speaking, other light source that you would have down there, you would be baking cookies yeah. under them. Because it's, yeah, there's literally 60 of them. Mm -hmm. And that's only for half the building. There's totally a 72 for half the building. That's insane. So we're going to end up with something like 150 in this building. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to that. Yeah. Did you ever do fresh water? So this is like totally going to alienate the, alienate the chat here. Yeah, I did fresh water since I was like 12 until I was... 26, 27, 28. Huh. I, had, I had 125-gallon fresh water in the same spot that I have my tank now. Oh, okay. So the reason why I'm asking about fresh water is that now that I've gone to a couple of trade shows that have had fresh water exhibits, I kind of got interested in it again. Like I haven't felt anything about fresh water in like 30-something years. Like I just, it was a complete oversight on my part. But I was kind of like looking at some of these displays, like, you know what, those are kind of actually kind of cool. Are they, were they planted? Some of them, yeah. And some of them were pelidariums, which I like, which I liked, which is like the, a little bit of water. And then so you get like the aquatic plants, then you get the semi-aquatic plants, and you get the terrestrial plants. Mm -hmm. And some of them had like lizards and frogs that lived in the, in the arbor. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. it was like pretty cool stuff. I do, they are cool, but man, I can't imagine. I, I would think it's, I think some of those would be even more difficult than reef, or at least more labor intensive. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be easier. Yeah. I just thought they were pretty cool. They are cool. <laughs> so, I don't know, in chat, any of you reef guys still have fresh water? I'm kind of curious. So l let me know if you, either way, if you, used to do fresh water and you no longer do or you still do fresh water in addition i do technically have i have a fresh water with in my office and it's 90 gallons and it's got fish from when i actually bred some rainbow fish uh when i have fresh water there's still some of them in my 90 gallon at work and it is a i haven't cleaned the glass <laughs> in probably two years it's such a green mess but it's kind of like a natural ecosystem that it, it seems to be doing well, but I, I have neglected it, but things have done well in it. I'm actually, I just need to find the time and the willpower to take it down. And I, my father-in-law said he'd take the fish, so. Oh, okay. Huh. So technically I still have a fresh I'm surprised that, it, that, that at your office it wouldn't have done better. Like I'd be in that thing all the time rather than working. Yeah, <laughs> no. So, so two please. First, dollar ninety nine said just ordered three of the new Hydra thirty two HDs. I'm not familiar. With not it. even familiar with that light. But then again, uh, is it AI? Yeah, that'd be an AI. Yeah, they come out with a new light like every six months. So, I'm just out of the loop when it comes to a lot of lighting stuff. Luke Schnabel, EU to freshwater. For, for, for whatever reason, Luke just doesn't like, he's like, it's, it's like grass. Just look outside. That's what your freshwater tank looks like. <laughs> Such a hater. Freshwater scrubs. Planted tanks are so much fun, easier than corals. Okay, interesting. Lovely exotics said. Um, YouTube still giving out free super chats? I hope so. Oh, by the way, uh, let's get that. Yeah, if you guys are on, a, on, on YouTube, Prime? What, what is it? What is the, the, the paid YouTube? Red? 
YouTube. Is that what it is? I think they changed the name of that because mm. of some unfortunate similarities. But I think that you can you you have like you, you have like a, a five dollar per month giveaway that you can you can do in super chats. <laughs> so thank you, Chillaxing. Four ninety nine, awesome. Uh, Dakota Harness right here, first fresh, then added salt. Whole bunch of tanks for for shrimp, two reefs, nice. Marcus Aurelius one eight seven still has has fresh, fifteen gallon axolotl tank. So that's cool. So Lovely Exotics has a fifteen gallon axolotl tank. There's a guy that used to work at the Akron Zoo here, that would always sell axolotls to the local fish store that I grew up with, and. That guy was here this past week because uh, he works at the Cleveland Zoo now. And he's like, yeah, I'm still breeding axolotls. Let me know anytime you, you, want, you want some. I'm like, That's cool. I got an axolotl source. <laughs> Just need a freshwater tank. Aaron Alexander, thank you for the $2. I've had freshwater for 20 plus years. Reefing for two. And Carrie Reefer, five dollars. Thanks for uh, making videos for us every now and then. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yes, true, true, true. Thank every you. now and then. <laughs> you wonder when I can get around to it. No, I've, I've got a, I've got a couple of um, I've got a couple of videos that I can spool up here once I'm done with this live show. So, for example, uh, especially after today, I'll have a lot to talk about in the way of updates for this. Uh, for my system downstairs. I can hear him working on the plumbing right now. Yeah, I, I hear I hear some saws. That's that's always a good sign. Um, so there's that. Oh, here we go, chillaxing, making it rain. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what else? I went to Rico's house, and I shot footage of his tank. So I don't know if you you follow his channel at all, but he had like a major setback like a few months ago. And um, I think I. I Last time I saw was at the beginning of having issues or okay. whatever. So he travels a lot. And um, he went away for like one weekend. And he came back and it's like everything was like going downhill. And it like stayed going downhill. And then he made like a whole bunch of changes and stuff like that. And his tank is just now rebounding. But it easily took away like a year's worth of progress. Like it was rough. Yeah. So yeah, I went back and and asked, and I'm, I think I might just do like a like a quick comparison showing like the first time that he started putting corals in, and then I didn't have anything about the crash. So seeing it again, it almost looks like the same tank, but with like algae on the rocks and like it was it was like it was that big of a setback. Uh oh. <laughs> Wolf the Fallen with the two dollars. Love all your coral. Thank you. Uh, chillaxing, still making it rain. Amazing. <laughs> David L. Dollar ninety nine. Thank you. Love your live sales. Making, making it, it dribble. dribble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very nice. Water flow is water flow. It's it's like what, what did somebody say once? It's like I, I've been known to make it drizzle occasionally. <laughs> And two please with the nine ninety nine. There you go. Oh, look at oh, the little animation oh, with, 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 with the animated super chat. There you go. Technology, man. I'm telling you. I think I watch your video with Nathan's aquarium like a thousand times every day. His tank is sweet. Like, don't even get it twisted. His tank is like really nice. It's just too small now. <laughs> My 200 gallon tank, it's too, too small. It is. You hear that, Lex? Welkin, would you say my fish tank's too small? Yeah. No, it is. It is. We need a new one. It's been. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can go sit outside in the car. Thank you very much. She said, no, we don't need a new tank. She's going to be. She's banned to the car. She's go. like, she's like, uh, like, like mom. Yeah. Like mom and Lexi, yeah. not feeling the tank. Welkin, Welkin, do we need a bigger fish tank? He nods, yes. Somebody can stay up till midnight <laughs> playing video games tonight. <laughs> Luke, it's like I didn't even know about the super chat stuff. So Luke, like you've been out of you've been out of the YouTube loop for so long. Snoop Dogg's favorite rain drizzle. <laughs> the two dollar super chat. Thank you, Aaron. The IOU super chat. 
Mike Leonard, five dollars super chat. Thank you. Yeah, dude, what is up? Like, what, what, what all started this? We started. You talking. know what? I, I think it was, we started talking about the. Yeah. Uh, I think it was chillaxing that started it. You want to have a snack? Go for it. <laughs> Luke said, "My wife wants me to sell all my stuff too." Been there. Yeah. Fight the good fight. So the thing. Hundred uh, years war. <laughs> So at least Luke gets to work here, so it's not, so he doesn't have like the the jonesing as bad for 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 a tank at home. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like it's a hard thing to get rid of because to some degree, your tank can be pretty profitable if you do it if you do it really well. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, big time. I really love the video with Will, Nathan, and Rico. Thank you, Carrie Reefer. Five dollars again. Um, so, Will, I saw the other day, and I, I'm going to see his tank again at some point. So the problem with Will is Will. This is, here's what the, what your problem is. You're too successful, <laughs> <laughs> and like your your duties as CEO of your company. Are messing with my film schedule. Yeah, and we don't hang out enough. Gotta prioritize things. So, at any time you want to like stop doing that, we can hang out more, and I can shoot your tank again. Which, which from what I, from what I understand, and from like some of the the, the pictures that he sent me, he has this really nice uh, ultra low nutrient SPS tank that I would never personally ever shoot for because I'm not all about that ultra low nutrient life. But he is mad scientist chemistry guy when it comes to his aquarium. Like he wants to control every atom that's going to eventually turn into an acropora. <laughs> and yeah, and he's he's getting some pretty cool results. So I would like to kind of see his his tank all fleshed out. He's a little busy. Thank you again, to please for the four ninety nine. I don't even know how much you're up to on this live show. <laughs> But I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Uh, Greg Reefway with a six dollar super chat. Thanks for all the all the good. Inf this, by the way, this is like more super chats than I've like received, like combined ever in like six years. So <laughs> I, I'm loving this. And well, you know, just yeah. And, and as Two Please says, Dan has some crazy bills to pay off. Just think, it's Saturday and the plumber is here working. Yeah, the plumber's <laughs> here working on a Saturday. That's not cheap. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of like a little bit of dirt. So my my plumber is feeling kind of bad that he hasn't been over to do a lot of this work, right? And so he usually has like a small upcharge on the materials, right? For all this plumbing stuff. But these days he is just like hooking me up big time when it comes to materials. And it is still an insane amount of money. Okay. So <laughs> you're getting so, the materials at cost, paying for labor, and it's still just I haven't even gotten the bill for the labor yet. It's going to be fine one day, but for just the materials for my four aquariums to plumb them, not the tanks themselves, just the just the physical plumbing, we're up to like four thousand dollars. In at, at like no markup plumbing, not retail like at, at Lowe's or Home Depot, but it's. It is a shocking amount of money when you're talking about large diameter Schedule 80 stuff and the lengths that we're talking about and the number of valves that we're talking about. It's like, oh, every single one of those valves is like $60 to $200. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. How many of those are there? I don't even know. And we're going to need more of them because I have more tanks coming. So we just, let's keep it going. <laughs> let's just keep it going. But again, if, if you guys are located in the U.S., you can I appreciate the heck out of the super chats, but by all means, no one is obligated to do super chats. You'd rather have them buy Pusillopora. You can you can buy corals, like this <laughs> lovely neon green Ghani. So you don't have any. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Trading super chats for coral. <laughs> hey, either one works for me. I'll take it. Uh, Coco the nut. Uh, my wife too. Uh, just tell her how much it means to you. Is that gonna work? Man, eh, we've tried that. Yeah. Hey, like I said, she's tolerant. <laughs> she's tolerant of what I have now. She knows I have plans for a bigger tank, so she's pretty much accepted that as well. So that's good. Yeah. 
So Matt is saying, tell him you'll plug his company for a discount. So if anybody out there is like thinking about going to college, don't. Go into the trade. <laughs> because tradesmen nowadays, electricians, carpenters, plumbers, they have infinite work. Like they are very much in demand. Six months wait lists mm -hmm. for, ev for everything and anything. If you're halfway decent at what you do, it's like just do this and be a millionaire. Like be a millionaire plumber. Do that, right? It, it's, it's, it's bonkers. Like, yeah, he does not need me advertising for him. If anything, I should like blur out his company van and stuff because it's like no more jobs for you, Jeremy. You need to come over here and work on my tanks. So we talked about this, Jeremy. I don't need to hear about how you need to like do three more hospitals yeah. and no. a car wash. No. Okay, random thing about this car wash, okay, that just got me thinking. So there's a crazy person that operates this amazing car wash like five minutes away from me. And I guess he made his money in something else and decides he wants to go into car wash business. And he's like the title gardens of car washes. Did he make his money in meth sales? I, I don't Is know. Is this a laundering? Uh, uh, no, I think it's like uh, he might be some kind of like Wall Street baller or something like that and decided he wants just to like, you know, slow it down and be a car wash guy. So he has one of these car wash things that, you know, they just put a little sticker on your car and you just drive up, scans the sticker, a gate comes up, and you just drive into the car wash. You don't have to talk to anybody sort of thing, right? <laughs> so they're doubling the size of their car wash because they're so successful. And like on a weekend, they go through 3,000 cars in this car wash. Wow. Okay. And so they have, a, they have a subscriber model. So I pay 40 bucks a month. I can go as many times as I like. So in, in the wintertime, I get my car wash three days a week, that, that sort of thing, right? Awesome. In his new section of his car wash, Jeremy the plumber is doing all the plumbing and everything like that, doing the radiant floor heating in this car wash. And he said that they have this, these blower systems to dry your car off that no other car wash in the country has. Because these blowers will blow every molecule of water off your car, okay? <laughs> Supposedly, each one of these blowers is 100 grand. Wow. And there's 16 of them. He has a million and a half in blowers. There's 16 horsepower blowers. And he, and, uh, he also, because uh, like my, my car is older, it's like a 2008, and so I don't care if like the car wash puts swirls in my paint, I don't care. But these guys insist that they do not put swirls in your car. And I'm like, sure, whatever, my car is old, I don't care. They said no. They have like these high def cameras that when you pull in with your car, it shoots like 50 different angles of your car, and it can, it can to, get To down. customize that? No, to prove that they don't put swirls in your car. <laughs> so if you ever wanted to do a lawsuit, they, they're just gonna pull up the receipts. They're gonna be like, okay, on such okay. and such day, here's your car as it came in, here's your car as it left. So tell me at what point you start seeing scratches. <laughs> like, they're, it's, it's the most insane car wash ever. I'm like, wow, this is great. We're going to bulletproof our guarantees. No yep. one's coming back at us. <clears throat> um, Matt, man, you can do super chat raffles, by the way. That's interesting. It we can is. do gambling. Yeah. <laughs> loot boxes. We can do, yeah, we can do loot boxes, guys. <laughs> loot box, loot box. Yeah. Yeah. Was, you know what? Bid on this coral loot box or buy a loot box. Yeah. Of course. How can we, how can we just make that digital? So I don't even have to send coral. Just coral emojis. You unlock coral emojis oh, yeah. for the chat. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah, this, we can do some like CS:GO stuff. I can make videos of me reacting to my own loot box openings. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this will be great. <clears throat> Rainbow chalice emoji. Two, wow. please. Nineteen ninety nine. Thank you. Wolf the Fallen five dollars. I need an easy. Entry SPS Coral. I'll tell you what. Stop by Title Gardens. I will hook you up with some Pasolipora. <laughs> Matt, car wash for us introverts, finally. <laughs> True, right? You don't have to talk to anybody. And at the end, there's no like dudes that run up on your car and like, start drying it off and asking for tips. No, none of that. Because they have a million six in blowers. <laughs> that they don't need those guys at the end. 
<laughs> yeah, a whole bunch of people are saying introvert friendly car wash yeah. is about time. Don't even need to make eye contact with anybody. You're 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 so you're so done. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Berkey, why get your car wash when you can just drive around in the rain for free? Lol. I'll tell you why. Because this car wash, it sprays like the black stuff on your tires too to like make your tires like extra glossy. Kid time. Am I making an appearance? Oh, oh, here they all are. No more Fortnite. Oh, Scott Morrison's asking, do you send corals to Scotland? No, it's actually really difficult to send corals overseas to you guys. So who are the kids? This is Welkin. And this is Lexi. Hi. Can that's you guys say hi? Can you say hi, Welkin? Say hi. Hi. There you go. That picked you up. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> All right, go have your snacks. Bye. <laughs> uh, Luke Schnabel saying, Nathan, are you going to be selling any rainbow chalice at Lear? Um, Correct answer is no. You should be selling it to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know because, like I said, some of my rainbow chalices were having some issues. So a couple of them are still fine, but a couple of them are not. <laughs> like, so he's well, like, "Daddy, I'm gonna go downstairs." Yeah. The, the rainbow chalices were the kind of one. A couple of them are the ones that were affected, unfortunately. So yeah. I have friends who have. Uh, frags from me over time of those chalices so eventually I do plan to if I lose them all or lose them I plan to recoup them but so yeah definitely save the heck out of those because they are they're, they're borderline cost no object stuff now like they're so difficult to find now no that makes me feel even worse <laughs> <laughs> well at least you physically have something resembling that because yeah. like I definitely do not yeah Yeah, Luke, Luke had trouble with his, too. Uh, virtual fan. Max Hedrum of the coral industry. <laughs> yeah. I think we are talking about those loot boxes, maybe. Uh, so how, how old are your kids? Amy Bruner is asking. Uh, my daughter is nine, and my son is seven. There you go. Now they Luke. just they went to play amongst the plumbing and tanks downstairs. Yeah, that'll be super not dangerous. <laughs> super not dangerous with the chop saw and everything. Yeah, let me go see what they're doing. Actually. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Gotta it's lay like, out some ground rules. It's like, what could possibly go wrong? Hopefully there's no blow to blowtorch or anything just running. They won't grab anything, but... <laughs> Okay, let's see. Um, so Gabriel's asking, thoughts on getting rid of diatoms? Heard of increasing your nutrient levels will uh, outcompete them? Um, I don't love that idea. I would be more inclined with doing water changes as well as possibly running UV. But then again, when it comes to diatoms, I'm a little bit of a novice because I don't deal with them a lot. Don't deal with them a lot, unfortunately. Wolf the Fallen. Woot, see you soon. I got three corals from the show. Awesome. Awesome. And like I said, take me up on that offer for, uh, for Pasta Lapora because we're going to be fire sailing some of that stuff. Like uh, we had uh, this alkalinity dip in one of our systems. So it went all the way down to maybe like two or three. It's supposed to be at like eight or nine, right? And I think a lot of it just had to do with just these colonies that just exploded in size. Cullen Gambetta. Wow, actually made it live. Hi, Than. Hello, Cullen. Welcome. So, yeah, we're just hanging out here for a little while longer. I think that we've got, what, maybe 40 or so left. What number are we on? So we got this red Acropora Millie, 154. Okay, so we have exactly 40 corals left. So we're going to hang out for just a little longer. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the show. I mean, just, just based on the number of like insane super chat donations, by the way, which is like really amazing. I super, super appreciate it. Oh my God. The, again, the, the, the bills here are truly silly. And they've been silly for about two years now. Let's, let's not even get it twisted. But it's, at this point, like every little bit helps. And I can't wait to start getting 
stuff running officially downstairs. We are so close. I mean, again, Plumber is working right now on it. Um, we should have salt water within a few days. And after that, it's just a matter of just cycling and quarantining uh, corals. And once I do get my quarantine systems uh, like fully fleshed out, uh, I definitely will be doing um, a whole video on our quarantine process because a lot of people ask about quarantine and uh, we weren't really able to do it very well in the greenhouse setup for a number of different reasons. But coming to this new building, I want to be like hyper vigilant on how we do uh, all the introductions in here. Because, you know, pests are a nuisance, algae is a nuisance, and whatever we can just like preclude right off the bat would be so helpful because the amount of time it takes to, to uh, kind of like deal with some of those problems, it's such a pain. So anything we can do. And obviously Luke is a huge proponent of, of quarantine. So we're gonna, we're gonna be hyper diligent when it comes to that. Mike Leonard says, my postal pore always die within a few months. I had a bonsai acro for a year without issue and a milli, but my postal pore always RIP. That is very, very strange. I would not, I wouldn't expect that too much. Um, well, when it comes to postulopora, it's usually like lower light that they like. So the sort of thing that, so the sort of tank that a, that an acro would like um, might not be the best for a postulopora. So you have to set the ground rules for the kids? I know because they were already, your dad was already setting up Netflix for them. Oh, nice. So yeah, your parents are down there. And, nice. And uh, I did stop briefly to look at the tanks with the water flowing and it's it's rather satisfying how quiet <laughs> and okay how so well it's working i've been a complete psycho this entire time when putting this building together it's like one of the the chief concerns that i had was well the the, the number one chief concern is do not let the aquariums eat this building alive right but then the very next thing is I want it to be quiet. Certain things, not working out so well. But anything that I can do to make something quieter, I'm doing. So going with the abyss pumps and those bean animal overflows, it is moving a ton of volume. Yeah, like I said, I, I didn't look at it very quick. I, it was a real quick glimpse, but I did notice how quiet it was, and I look forward to yeah. inspecting it further. <laughs> Well, because right right now you're hearing other things entirely that are not the water, like because uh, we we have um, these air exchangers, which are actually are pretty quiet on their own, but I have them cranked to a hundred percent because of all the all the fumes downstairs from the PVC cement. Uh, those just swap out the air like x number of times per hour when when they're on max, and just like just swapping out all that that all that air. It's nice, it makes a little bit of a noise, but that little bit of noise completely drowns out the amount of noise that the tanks are making. So once I go back down there and turn those vents, uh, those air exchangers all the way down, it, it, you'll see just how quiet that is. There's other things that make a lot more noise, and I'm like, I'm gonna yeah, fix that. There's a target on that. One day. <laughs> People aren't gonna like it because it's gonna be silly to do but i'm gonna do it <laughs> it's like it's not even that loud it's like i know it's not that loud but i can hear it mm -hmm. and that's a problem so we're gonna stop that right now uh, what eats detritus not a lot eats detritus sea cucumber does it i don't know it eats sand kind of yeah yeah no i don't know if you're gonna get much I like the next answer, the answer to that. Siphon hose. The siphon hose is the best bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Filter the whole sock. point is you want to get that out eventually, either through your, you want to keep it suspended in the, from off the bottom by flow or concentrate it in one area using flow and then suck it out mm -hmm. and filter sock and skimmer. Yeah. So we don't use filter socks at all. You do. Yeah. Okay. How often do you clean your filter sock? Uh, I, sw I try and swap them out once a week. Okay. 
yeah. and then if they they clog then they'll, it'll there's a little spill over into the mm -hmm. the chamber of the sump which is relatively large and any other detritus usually settles in that before it gets through that chamber the skimmer's in there but it's not a really high flow area because it's it, it's a relatively large area so the flow's rather yeah so then i i'll siphon it out of there the problem i do have is because my frag tank is was an emergency replacement and uh it wasn't really designed for a frag tank it was more like a, a store display tank is what it was okay uh, but it was the right footprint when i needed a, a replacement and that doesn't have enough flow out of it in my opinion to get oh, all that okay. detritus to flow out the drain so, is limited yeah so i have to um and it's loud and uh uh, it's only just one drain pipe. It's not the bean animal that I right, used to have. Right. Um, so uh, I siphon that out from time to time. Than just install a whole building PA system <laughs> would not help us, believe it or not, because we have multiple buildings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Mike Leonard, my last super chat until I steal my wife's phone. And he's going to start super chatting from Super there. chat on her phone? That'd be awesome. Uh, let's see. Um, your live sales are amazing. Thank you, David L. Best format sale. No, I, I appreciate that you appreciate the live show format because I was uh, I was working on the, on this file that you're that you're watching yesterday, and the I've changed a couple of things since the last time that we did this. So, for example, you see, like this regular price and ten percent off and all that stuff. That's new, right? And it doesn't look like it's that much, but I'm copying and pasting off of um, a spreadsheet, so to to like to show like the name of the coral, and all that stuff, right? So that's like one thing that I have to to copy paste. But then in order to do the regular price and that 25% off on this uh, flick of flame cyphastria, um, that's two more copy pastes. So just to do that additional thing, tripled my work to do this thing. <laughs> so, yeah, it is- Appreciate uh, the effort, is yeah, what you're saying. It, it's a lot, it's a lot of, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of time. I think that I worked about like five hours on just the edit for, for this show. And then I hit the button that stabilizes all this footage and that takes like another five hours. <laughs> then I hit the, the export button and then I go home. And hopefully by when I wake up, there's gonna be a broadcast file. Oh, Otherwise, I'm gonna be like, but clenched, hoping that I, that I have enough time before the show starts to try to re-export. Uh, you know what? I'm looking. I don't think I have any super free super chats. Oh, really? Yeah, I did one that one time, but I think yeah. maybe I'm not. I don't know. I I don't. So you have the 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 YouTube Premium, right? I had one of them. I didn't pay for it, but like I was grandfathered into it in oh. in some way. And I was able to do the one free yeah. super chat. I don't know how it works. I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm old. I, I don't I have it anymore. I don't I, know I, how it works. I did it for Karate Kid season one, and then I stopped, and I never got it back again. Every time we run out of real estate in our aquarium, we say we need a bigger aquarium. Before you know it, we have a two hundred thousand gallon in our house. I am all for that. I, I love the idea of having like ginormous home aquariums. Um, Matt is asking, have you ever talked in depth about your current photography setup? Actually, I have. So a couple months ago, I did um, a, a video on the photography and videography setup. Well, I guess it's not technically about the photography setup. So if you're asking about just like the still photos that we do for our, our, all of our online stuff, like our social media, I haven't done one recently on that. In the future, I should. When I get when I when I get a new camera, we can talk about the photography again. If you're interested in the videography stuff, uh, there was a there was a video from a couple months ago. Marcus really says I got lucky with the aquascape. Detritus always lands on the same three spots. That's nice. Yeah, that happens once you yeah. set up your flow. But yeah, that's nice. Uh, Gabriel Valona is asking, so how do we buy in chat or are they on the site? It's on the site. So go to titlegardens.com 
and uh, navigate to the live sale page and you will see this video is embedded as well as all of these items. So uh, we're close to the end here. We've got like, I don't know, 20 more or so. Uh, you can scrub back through and see uh, all the ones that, that you've missed. So if you're interested, for example, in, in item number 172 here, you would just put into your shopping cart and check out like it's a regular item. I did hear you say when you get a new camera. Is there one in the process or? Uh, okay, so I'll be real you don't have enough bills. We don't have enough money. I was going to say, you don't have enough fills, you're getting a new cam camera? But yeah, there is one that I would like. It is called a Fuji GFX100. It is like a 100 megapixel uh, medium format uh, sensor camera. So it's larger than full frame. So you know how like a, a f so do you know what APS-C is a smaller sensor size? It's a very popular size. So the, this camera, for instance, here is called a Super 35, which is roughly the same size as, as an APS-C. So you have a full frame, which is a full framed 35 millimeter size. APS-C is smaller than that. So when you have like, let's say a 100 millimeter lens uh, and you put it onto an APS-C sensor, you get this cropped effect because you're only seeing a small portion of that lens. So that 100 millimeter actually kind of looks more like 150 or 160, okay? So you're not getting as wide of an image because you're not seeing as much of the, of the View. viewable of that lens. Mm -hmm. On a full frame, you're seeing the full, what you should be from a 35 millimeter lens. When you go to medium format, it goes the opposite direction. So like your 100 now is acting wider it's acting more like a 75. And you need to also have special lenses to actually cover the size of that sensor. <laughs> so I am, I am hopeful to, to upgrade my camera because my, my photography stills camera is very old. It's a Canon 5D Mark II. So there's that. Ernie Wallace, what's up? $20. Greetings, Stan. Need to make up from the missing the last couple of live shows. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> And to, yeah, Tech Gear Talk, he's still in here. New camera, Fuji, yep. <laughs> so, yeah, I saw him put that in there. I was like, you've, you've already discussed this, I'm sure. <laughs> so here's the thing, about what's hilarious about Fuji, okay? Uh, they did this, uh, they didn't do this, but this one uh, photography YouTuber did this, where he had four uh, images taken, one with a Canon, one with a Nikon, one with a Fuji, and one with uh, a Panasonic, I think. Or There's four different ones. And photographers were surveyed and had to choose which of theirs was the favorite. Like which image, but th there was no labeling. It, it was just like camera A, B, C, D, which is your favorite, okay? Then they, asked, they answered a couple other photography things. And then another thing comes up, same images, but instead of A, B, C, D, it's Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji, right? So it was Sony, not not a Panasonic. So what was hilarious was it was in a slightly different order. But what was crazy was that people love the brand of camera that they shoot with. So once they see that 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 Canon one, oh, that's my camera. I like that one. I like best. I like that one the best, well, right? Without the label. But without the label, Fuji was like 75% of all the participants chose like the Fuji image over all the others. And then when they, when they had the camera labels, Fuji dead last. <laughs> like, it, it's, but, but objectively, these professionals actually liked the Fuji. Hmm. And then, then their biases came in. They're like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Nikon for life. The fanboys. Yeah. It's like Sony or die. Yeah. <laughs> So Ernie is asking, uh, my SPS growth is awesome. The colors are faded at about 32 par. He corrected that, the 325. 325 par. Do you have any tips for bringing up the color in SPS? I do. Feed them. So I am all in on amino acids. Like, true believer when it comes to amino acids. Because what had happened was I was using amino acids, and then my bottle ran out. And... Me being me, 
I just didn't place another order. Eh, yeah, whatever. Corals are fine. My corals looked amazing when I had it on, on, on amino acids. And later on, they, they're still fine. But I, I chalked it up to, oh, it's because it was a hot summer. Or they, they, they were unhappy about something. And then I got a sample of amino acids. No, I didn't get a sample. I actually bought some. I just happened upon some, like a big gallon jug of it. I'm like, yeah, let's add that to the order, right? And then we started to do amino acids again. And in 48 hours, I could tell the difference. It's like, oh, these are all those colors that just came back. That is very interesting. Yeah. So I'm like, if you, if you want better colors, try the aminos. I don't care what brand is your favorite. Like, originally, we tried Brightwell, had great results. Um, when I got this gallon jug, uh, that particular store didn't have Brightwell, but it had Aqua Vitro Fuel. And I don't remember exactly what company makes that. Maybe it's Aqua Vitro. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard good stuff about it. Is it Eels? I don't, I don't know, but it was cheap for the volume. So I just got the cheap for the volume because I don't think that there's a lot of magic when it comes to amino acids. I mean, me knowing what I know about like, you know, freshman chemistry, it's not a big deal. It's some pretty basic stuff. You shouldn't be paying a ton for amino acids. Uh, but it, it instantly made a huge difference in my, in my corals. So all about it. Uh, so Luke is asking, Nathan, do you do ICP testing? I have not, though, boy, would it be a good idea, right, when you have mysterious coral die-off? Just make sure that there's not some sort of strange contamination or something leaching. Yeah, we did an ICP test recently. Um, so it was the first one we've ever done. Like, uh, the guys at Triton gave us some test kits. Did they laugh at you about your phosphate levels? <laughs> I don't even think phosphate was on the thing. Oh, I don't even know. oh that's interesting. But uh, what was like, what was interesting was we had certain trace elements that were like super sky high. And it's because of, well, we, we tested, oh, you know what? It probably does test phosphate. But we didn't have a phosphate problem because we tested our, our new salt water. Oh. Not our tanks, which are probably all crazy. <laughs> but our new salt water had some uh, trace elements that are super high, like lithium and stuff like that. And it's all like, you know, in the red. And we were slightly concerned. But a, a lot of times there's like these stabilizing agents because salt water reacts with itself. And so like, you, you know, your, your alkalinity and stuff and your calcium want to interact. And so sometimes you need to have like some little bit of extra to kind of keep them in their own corner, right? So when we looked up like stuff like lithium and things like that, uh, I read some articles by like Randy Holmes Farley, and he said that it's actually not a big deal because you're talking about trace elements to begin with. So it's less than one percent, right? Yeah. And not only that, but you know what lithium behaves a lot like, like chloride. So it's like NaCl, it's acting like that last little, little smidge of salt. And it's a tiny, tiny <laughs> bit to begin with. Right. <clears throat> uh, Suv porridge, are you talking about salt? I just came in. Uh, no, well, we were talking about salt, but I think that when you put in your comment, I think we were talking about amino acids for feeding uh, SPS. Uh, Connor Kessler, how do you dose amino acids? I have a small tub of aquaforist acids in powder form, but I just can't seem to get it to stay in suspension. That's weird. Um, it's so fine it clumps and floats no matter how much I mix it. So all of the amino acids that I've ever used were liquid-based. Um, so I don't know what the deal is with aquaforist, but yeah, like all the other stuff I've ever seen was in liquid form. Uh, Aquavitros Sea Chem. Okay, so Squidurp12 says Aquavitros Sea Chem. All right. Uh, Alan R. Jackson Jr., what brand are you using? Uh, of what? So, salt, I'm using Omega C. The test, the Triton test was the, was the ICP that we used. Okay, so Ernie Wallace says ATI ICP tests for for um, P, which is what, ph phosphorus, PO4 and NO3. I think Triton only does P, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Nathan, so Matt is asking, how do you handle backup power? 
Uh, I have a whole, whole house automatic uh, gen backup generator, so if the power gets cut, uh, that kicks in within a like 30 seconds. So I have just my return pump on a battery backup so that the return pump continues for long enough, plenty of time until the generator is it gasoline powering or natural gas natural gas natural gas okay. yeah so i don't have to refill it or anything it just starts sucking up the mm -hmm. from my natural gas line at the house mm -hmm. so um that is how i do it that's how i used to do it um currently we don't have a backup uh we need to get one one of these days now we used to we used to have one and it just died after about 10 years oh okay so Let's see what happened yeah well it just died like, it's like, huh, look, it's leaking this black fluid all over itself. That's not good. So like, I think it's done. Yeah. Yeah, I would say get one if here. I think it would be a good idea for you. Yeah, but the problem is, I think that the one that I need here, like, now it's going to be like a huge. truck. It's the yeah, size it's, of a truck. Yeah, it's going to be one of those large container ones, I'm yeah. sure. But it's, it's oh. they work. They're really good. Yeah, I, I don't know how you're going to go through the winter without one. It's like it's with well, your fingers crossed. Well, no, I don't have any coral in here. What about the greenhouse? Oh, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, it'll it, be fine. It most certainly will not be fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Two please has to go. Thank you so much, two please. Thanks for the stream. Nice to see you, Nathan. There. Yeah. You see you, two please. <laughs> have a good evening. No, I, I I definitely need to to get some some backup. <laughs> it'll out. be fine. It'll be fine. Wow. So what, what, what could go wrong? What confidence? Uh, actually. There is a backup. It's called Jeremy the Plumber. I'd say about half of his business is emergency calls. So he will come over with generators and everything will be fine. He has generators. Yes. I was like, he's a plumber, not an electrician. Right. And I, I, cause I was asking about it. It's like, you know, it, hey, you know, what, what can we like power off of, you know, generators and this and that? He's like, if you ever have a problem, Call me, we'll be over with like 10 Honda generators. We'll power everything. And I'm like, awesome. Is he in the area? Your area? Mm -hmm. This area? Yeah. And you you came across him because he's in he's somewhat in the hobby? No, long story. Uh, I had uh, posted like one of these requests on Facebook. It's like, I need a plumber, right? I just got lucky. Wow. But I, I, I need a plumber. And so uh, Tech Gear Talk's wife responded, and she suggested this guy that was up in Cleveland. That guy said, you know, for union reasons, he can't work this far south. But he knows a guy, and that was this guy, Jeremy. And like, just because of this referral, I was able to, to, to get Jeremy. And he has been like amazing. The only problem is because he works in a, in a trade, it's, it's like he's actually useful and people pay him money to work and he has to do a lot of it all the time. So, and also like because of that, that emergency business, uh, if it, all of his clients understand this, okay? If there's an emergency, all development stops. So it's because like, oh, a hospital doesn't have heat or this entire apartment complex doesn't have hot water, a boiler went down, that sort of thing. So I can't plumb your tanks, there's an emergency. I have been that emergency call before, and he shows up in 20 minutes. So like that, it, it, it's, it's worth the, the, the hassle there. That is nice. So going back to our original talk, I eventually do need to get a generator, but in a pinch, there's an emergency call to get generators. <laughs> Skylar corn with a dollar ninety nine. Thank you, Skylar. I want the pics you take of corals as my wallpaper. <laughs> uh, funny you should mention that, Skylar. Uh, on Patreon, uh, we upload full size uh, images for I think like the five dollar tier people. So um, if you wanted to do that, if you, if you need like the super high res stuff, that's by far the, the cheapest way to get access to a ton of our images is through Patreon. Like a lot of artists have become uh, patrons of Tidal Gardens. It's, it's kind of funny because um, my YouTube following is like 99.4% male and like 6%, no, 0.6% female, okay? <laughs> 
I, I, have, I have a segment here, right? But my Patreon is like 50% female. And it's because I was introduced to this artist community and they need reference images to incorporate into their own artwork legally. And that's what we offer is like we, we, you, we give you the, you know, the rights to use this for your, for your own you know, work and publications and whatever else. So I have like all these ladies that, that are artists that are Patreon members supporting Title Gardens. So another niche. Yeah, and it's, it's it's totally different niche, right? Uh, okay, so uh, Gabriel Valona is asking. So when the stream ends, that's the cutoff to buy. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, we keep the corals available to purchase for at least seventy two hours. Usually, right around Wednesday, we we take it down. So there's plenty of time to go back through and see now. The first time, but we're, we're, in, we're in overtime, guys. You guys get a little bit of a bonus. So um, usually during a live show, sometimes it can be competitive on certain things. So uh, we always recommend, you know, like go ahead and, and, and you know, make the purchases pretty aggressively during the show. But if there's like some, some straggling corals that are still available, like come Tuesday or something like that, by all means, they're, you know, just, you know, find all that stuff then. Okay, so can you recommend a coral to control GSP? Is the torch or pectinia strong enough, or will the GSPs win? Hmm. I don't know. G GSPs are pretty tough. Yeah, they're pretty good at just continuing on and matting. Yeah. Your, your best bet with a GSP, honestly, is an X-Acto knife, and it'll peel right off. Just trim it back. Yeah. Peel it. That'll buy you a couple months at least. Okay, well, speaking of Patreon, let me go ahead and give all the actual uh, $5 and up patrons a shout out, okay? And just like just by ear, you can tell some of them may be female, all right? So thank you to Juanita Threlkeld, Jeremy Altman, aka 2Please, who you are all very familiar with by now, uh, Bill Russell, Stefania, uh, Sana Nominet, Sean Gill, Christopher Frame, Dion Zaggy, Puddle Aquatics, Amy Bruner, Brandy Camp, Tim Garner, Harkins Aquatics, Diane Rishworth, Jennifer D. Nash, Zara McIntosh, Catherine Kehoe, Lacry Fine Art, Taisha Radich, The Classroom Reef, Chuck Admire, Jean A. Van Voorst, Rico's Aquariums, Christopher H. Curry, Alan Jackson, Trevor Joseph Overbeck, Kevin Cortez, Steve Pond, Ryan Kern, Nate Bowler, Ernest Wallace Jr., Dave Davis, and Elizabeth Dowell. So thank you all so much to the patrons. All right, guys. That pretty much does it. Any last minute questions for either myself or, or Nathan here? And I'm, and I'm also kind of like going back through the comments to see if I missed anything. Uh, so Connor Kessler says, I think Tesla's Powerwall became every Aquarius dream once the price on the tech comes down. Uh, I am interested in Tesla Powerwall stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm still interested in solar. Solar might be a year 2020 project here. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but the Powerwall stuff is super interesting. Super, super interesting. Would you put solar on the roof or so, in the yard? Uh, I was thinking of possibly both or either because I was reading all this stuff about you need you know, southern exposure and our roof goes east-west. Yeah. And so if, if you really desperately need southern exposure, I was going like to make a field of solar panels in my yard because I just love to mow my grass, right? So yeah, screw all that. Just <laughs> solar panel the whole damn thing. But now I'm reading a whole bunch of stuff about how you actually want an east-west. And I'm like, well, why? That makes no sense. And there's all of these, um, like, uh, like mathematical computations as to why east-west works better, even if it generates less electricity. And I'm like, hmm. Because I guess, like, it's collecting electric um, at, at its most intense when the electric rate is the most expensive as well as your likelihood to use it. Because you're getting early and late power yeah. generation instead of midday peak right. where, where all the other solar 
Um, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I don't but, know. So all the other solar, like it's everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> so so I think that what, what it was saying was like, it generates less electric, but it does it, it at peak time. It generates yeah. at peak times. It, so and it could be a garbage article, guys. Like solar is kind of a, a new game mm. when it comes to this, and maybe some bloggers just like I'm just gonna throw this out on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people with east west roof looking at solar let's give gonna, me those clicks give me those clicks maybe i can sell a power wall out of this <laughs> right so who knows but uh either way i think it's going to be a step in the right direction because i might be looking at a very large electric bill if my electrical rate goes up because like part of the reason why i'm hesitant to go with solar is we live in ohio we pay five cents per kilowatt hour like people in San Francisco pay like 25 cents per kilowatt hour. If my electric bill goes up to 10 cents per kilowatt hour, I am gonna take a loan out for these solar panels like <laughs> instantly because yeah, cause like my electric bill here is gonna be so giant, it's not even funny. And when I hear about other people's um, electric bills, like, uh, even still in Ohio, but they just have a different operation. Uh, I, I'm like, you pay how much for electric? Oh, hell no. We're not doing that. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, like, I, I'm, I'm so fortunate that we collect rainwater here because I was visiting um, down in Texas and in Dallas, like this, this guy that has this 1,000-gallon aquarium pays 10 cents per gallon for water. What? <laughs> I think it's yeah, automatic water changes. I don't know. <laughs> R R O. Yeah. Like, yeah. So so yeah. that means like you're paying thirty cents per gallon. Mm. So uh, so a five gallon bucket is basically like a dollar seventy or something. Is that is, did I just do my math wrong? I'm not even trying. That's like a dollar. Like maybe like let's say it's a dollar fifty, right? A dollar fifty for a five gallon bucket of water. And that's five gallons. You have yeah. a thousand gallon tank. Yeah. That's not, that's not even like, but by the way, you live in Dallas, so you, you have some um, you know, evaporation issues. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So, right. <clears throat> uh, v flux, do you have anything that's bright yellow in nature? So, yellow polyps, uh, there are some non photosynthetic corals, unfortunately, that are yellow, like things like sun, sun polyps. Can you think of anything else? Uh, the Blackboard. yellow submarine fabia has got some real yellow to it. True. Um, Parites sometimes comes in like a canary yellow. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, 24K lepto. That's true. Yeah, 24K lepto is a Which really, is a really pretty hardy. I mean, that's almost as yellow gold. I mean, that's as yellow as you get. Yeah, and that I is, mean, it is highlighter. Vivid. Yeah, highlighter yellow. Yeah, 24K lepto. Ceres. Uh, Tidal Gardens, last I checked, it was out of stock, but yellow perizoanthus certainly would be, yep, yeah, there you go. We should have some, by the way. Uh, let's see. Do you have 24K lepto? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Lots of it. Yeah, it's a hardy good grower, and it's vividly, it's the, intensely. It, that's the brightest yellow. It, yeah. and, and some of these things don't fluoresce yellow. Like, for example, the, the perizoanthus doesn't fluoresce yellow. But 24K that lepto. does. Yeah, it yeah, shines. It fluoresces. Uh, turbinaria, yeah, I could see that. So Alan Jackson's asking, what are you using for flow in the new tanks? I saw Ecotech for the return. Okay, so those Ecotechs that you saw are for closed loops. My return pump is an Abyss 400, which is a extraordinarily expensive, beautiful piece of German engineering that's like a solid block of titanium. It's very nice, very nice. Um, so they even make a bigger one that's like, uh, it's, instead of 400, it's like a 1200. And that's in reference to the wattage. They use those on fire trucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then they make this like torpedo looking cannon that's about like this big, which is like a, a Coralia. <laughs> that's, like, that's like this big. And that thing can move 50,000 gallons per hour. Is that the, uh, like a powerhead internal yeah. one for like? Public aquarium, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, fifty thousand gallons. Retail price, ten grand. You control riots with those things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, big time. All right, dude. Uh, what do you want to eat? I don't know. I don't. I'm up for 
pretty much anything the kids will agree to. <laughs> okay, so the kids are going to dictate. The kids we... do like the rail. Do they? Yeah, I told oh, them that's nice. that's possible. We go there. We go there a lot. So. Oh, nice. We we got this hamburger place nearby at the mall called the Rail. <laughs> so, kids' choice. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for for joining me. Uh, like I said, the the live show itself uh, is available for at least seventy two hours. Um, don't forget to leave a like on the way out, and uh, I'll see you guys all next time. I don't know how to end this stream. So with this new interface, so I might just be putzing around. Are we still on? Are we still on? We might be still on. Are we still on? Might be still on. (laughs) All right, bye guys.